Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Nice kitty. Hey everyone, it's Ethan Ormus back again for another video today. And welcome back to the channel, guys. We're here again for yet another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about every movie I watched last week. And overall, it was an interesting week, uh, as it typically is. But uh, let's get into it. And yeah, let's start off. My least favorite movie of the week was Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales uh, with a 24 out of 100. So definitely not a great movie by any means. Um, I really, really enjoyed the trilogy. The original trilogy was great. Uh, they ranged between an 86 and an 80 for me. I really liked the original trilogy, but the last two uh, I didn't really enjoy all that much, and that seemed to be uh, what most people thought of them as well. Um, so yeah, that kind of sucked, because I really wanted to enjoy this franchise a lot, and like I said, I really enjoyed the original trilogy, just those last two that really fell off for me, uh, which really sucks. But yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean was uh, my main watch of the week, and I'm glad I was able to uh, get that off the watch list because they were all first time watches for me. Uh, I definitely recognize some scenes from the first, second, and third because uh, I've just seen them in like passing, but I've never actually watched the movies from start to finish, so that was cool. But let's move on to You Don't Mess With a Zohan, or with a Zohan, sorry, a 50 out of 100. And this is probably the most racist movie I've ever watched, which is crazy. I remember watching this a lot growing up with my aunt and my uncle. I just have that vivid memory of this movie, and that's why I watched it. Because I remember it being a movie from my childhood, but which is really odd and probably not okay that I was watching this as a kid, but... Hey, man, things happen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely like the most racist movie I think I've ever seen. Uh, plus, I really hate animal abuse, especially in film. Uh, there's just no need for it, in my opinion. But um, yeah, really uh, just fine. It was just a fine movie. Like I said, 50 out of 100. So let's move on to uh, also a 50 out of 100, actually. Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. And... I felt like this one was decent, kind of mid. Like at times it was good and at times it was bad. I felt like the perfect rating for it was somewhere in that mid 50 range. So I just gave it a straight flat 50. Um, and I felt like that was just the right choice for it because even though I don't think it's a great movie, I also don't think it's like a trash or terrible movie. So, you know, I think that perfect or that 50 was just perfect for it. So overall, a mid movie, but at times enjoyable, at times not enjoyable. Um, well, let's move on to uh, number 12, which was my last watch of the week, I believe, actually, uh, which was Puss in Boots um, from 2011. And I got to say, this was very interesting um, to me because I've heard very mixed reviews about this movie. I've heard some really good things about it. I've heard some pretty poor things about it, but man... What a step up Puss in Boots, The Last Wishes, because this is truly incomparable. It's got a difference of like a 35 for me in ranking. So I ranked Puss in Boots a 58. I think I have The Last Wish at a 93. Um, so yeah, it's a big gap between the two. And obviously I don't really, I didn't really enjoy this one that much either. It was just kind of fine. Like a 58 is almost decent <laughs> um so you know not terrible but let's move on to um which is kind of sadly my favorite movie of the year uh which is this is me now um i ranked it a 68 out of 100 and like i said this is my highest rated movie of 2024 so far um i've watched i think 11 or 12 2024 releases so far and this is my favorite which is a little wild because it's only a 68. So obviously not the best start to the year by any means. Um, but yeah, it's just, it was a decent movie. It was interesting. It's basically just a long music video for uh, Jennifer Lopez's new album. So it was cool and it had some nice themes in it, but overall I just thought it was a decent film. So, and it's just a little over an hour. So it was a nice short watch, but 
Let's move on to uh, Pokemon the Movie, Secrets of the Jungle. So this week is really the first week of the year where it's kind of all over the place with themes. Uh, because I've been pretty consistent about sticking to a certain theme or a certain franchise for every week so far of the year. This previous one was the first one where I found myself, I was kind of all over the place and I was struggling to find like a franchise to watch. Um, so yeah, really the only franchise I watched this week was Pirates of the Caribbean. But yeah, overall I'm pretty much done with Pokemon movies now that are on streaming services. Uh, the only other movie that I can actually find, well, I'm sure I could find some more illegally, but um, yeah, I believe I've watched every Pokemon movie on streaming services now. I want to watch Detective Pikachu as well, because uh, I haven't watched that before, and but it's not on streaming services. But overall, this movie was pretty okay. It was good. I ranked it a 70 out of 100. I literally only wrote Pokemon Daddy issues, which I think is kind of funny, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> it was it was interesting. It kept my interest, but none of the Pokemon movies have been anything special so far from the ones that I've seen. I think I've seen five or six now, and none of them are really that special in my opinion. But let's move on to uh, what is next? Uh, to Crazy Stupid Love, uh, which I ranked a seventy nine out of one hundred. Um, yeah, uh, this was. A great movie. This is kind of a part of the Valentine's watch uh, for Mal and I this week. Of course, it was Valentine's Day. We watched a couple of movies together this week, and this is one of them. This is one that we both wanted to wa uh, knock off the watch list because we had never seen it before. Uh, overall, I thought it was... Originally, I had it rated at an 81 out of 100, but with some other movies that I watched this week, I decided to lower it to a 79. So I think it's borderline great. But it's definitely a good movie. 79 out of 100 is obviously pretty solid. The cast is really great in this movie, obviously. Really enjoyed the cast as well. Um, yeah, overall, just a good movie. But we'll talk about, in my opinion, a better version of this movie here shortly. Um, with that being said, let's move on to uh, number eight of the week. So we're about halfway. I watched 15 movies again this previous week. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Um, so yeah, most of the movies for this week are all rated pretty highly. Uh, but yes, my least favorite of the trilogy was the last of the trilogy. Uh, but yeah, at World's End, an 80 out of 100 for me. Um, this one was still great, in my opinion. I know a lot of people don't like this one as much, especially compared to the first two, but I think this one was great just as much. Uh, I really enjoyed the trilogy. I mean, I ranked them, I believe, an 86, an 80 three and an 80 so yeah i mean we'll get there in a minute but overall for at world's end an 80 and uh definitely the highlight of this entire trilogy was the music and set pieces absolutely incredible for both but let's keep going um up next we have uh migration which mel and i had seen in theaters this week this was a movie we both wanted to watch for quite some time and this is a like a perfect mel movie uh, this is like a made for Mel kind of movie. So it was a very cute animated flick that we both really enjoyed. I ranked it an 80 out of 100. Uh, I've seen some up and down reviews for this movie, but I enjoyed it and Mel really enjoyed it. So that's what matters. I'm very happy that she enjoyed it. Cause like I said, we've been talking about this for a while. So glad we finally got around to go and see it. Um, so let's keep going up to number six and this is what i said was kind of the uh better version of crazy stupid love and that's actually valentine's day i felt like this one was more interesting and more intriguing also just better i enjoyed the story a lot more it's similar to crazy stupid love where there, it's this huge cast that all have meshing storylines that eventually kind of come together but in crazy stupid love it more comes together as one storyline where there's still like a couple different storylines um in valentine's day but i loved it mel and i have been talking about watching this one ever since we started dating as well because it's one of taylor swift's movies uh her being in it of course and i'm glad we got to watch it her character was absolutely hilarious uh she was the funniest character in the movie in my opinion and I loved it. We both really enjoyed the movie. I ranked it an 81 out of 100. I think Mel has it at like a 97 or something. She started ranking movies as well the way that I do. So, um, yeah, really liked Valentine's Day. Uh, it was definitely 
Uh, it definitely exceeded expectations for me. So with that being said, let's m- now move on to the top five. So Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest is uh, an 83 out of 100 for me. And that is number five this week. So uh, again, I really enjoyed this movie. The Kraken is really awesome and iconic, of course. Um, and I really love this cast. I feel like the cast just gets so good uh, within these three movies. Like, they're all really fun um, and enjoyable, and I really like that. And again, similarly to the third and the first, uh, all three of these movies are superbly made. Like, they, the set pieces are crazy. The CGI and practical effects look incredible, um, and that's for, like, mid-2000s. So uh, it's just, they look great, in my opinion. Mid to late 2000s, I should say, but... This entire trilogy, again, it's just great. I think with a rewatch, I kind of want to rewatch them later this year. I think if I rewatch them, these might all go up a few points. That's very possible. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the trilogy. So with that being said, let's move on to number four, which was Dumb Money. This was a money. This was money. <laughs> this was a movie I really wanted to watch last year. Um, and I just never got around to it, unfortunately. But I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I rated it an 84 out of 100, so definitely enjoyed it. And I was really surprised to learn about this because I had never known what had happened. I never heard anything about this movie, and I had no idea how recent it was being 2020 to like 2021, kind of 2022, which is crazy because I never had any idea that this was happening in the world. Um, it's crazy because it was literally just a few years ago and as a guy that's a gamer I mean, I feel like I would have heard about that, but I've just never heard about that So it was pretty surprising and wild, but overall a great movie and yeah I mean, I can understand why it wasn't really talked about just because there were bigger things going on in the world around that but Anyways, let's move on to the top three this week Um, And at number three, we have Austin Powers, uh, International Man of Mystery. So this was the next thing that I wanted to knock off my watch list. But I only watched the first one uh, because I'd started watching the first one and about halfway through Mel told me she wanted to watch it with me. So I ended up finishing the first one. And then later on uh, this year, I'm going to rewatch the first one and then finish the trilogy. But I'm going to do it with Mel. We're going to watch the three of them together. So... Yeah, overall, an 86 out of 100. I was quite blown away by this movie because I fully expected to hate this movie and hate everything about it, and I was very, very wrong about it. I thought it was going to be so stupid and unfunny, but I was so wrong. I thought it was so funny, and which really surprised me because I just didn't expect the comedy to hit for me, but I really, really enjoyed it, and it was a very funny movie, and like I said, I just really enjoyed myself uh, while watching it, so... Let's move on to um, also an 86 out of 100, oddly enough, but Pirates of the Ke- uh, Ke- <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean, um, The Curse of the Black Pearl, which is my favorite. So an 86 out of 100 also, uh, it's my favorite in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, and it's my favorite from the trilogy. Um, I think every movie just gets a little bit worse uh, in the trilogy, and then we get a big jump, and then a big jump after that, but... Overall, I think it was a great way to start the trilogy. And again, I think I really want to rewatch them later this year to see if my ranking goes up with them because I really think they could, um, to be fair. So yeah, uh, really awesome. But let's move on to number one, which was actually my first watch of the week. And I learned that I didn't watch this last year, which was crazy to me because I didn't know that I didn't watch this last year. Um... But it was Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which is surprising to me because I've always vouched for this movie being one of my favorites, being a 100 out of 100, being a perfect movie, one of the best in the MCU. And I literally didn't even watch it last year. And I they completely slipped my mind. Not that I forgot about the movie, but I just thought I had watched it last year and I never did. Uh, so it was a little sad to learn that I hadn't watched it in like a year and a half. The last time I'd seen it was like November, 2022. So it had been a really long time and I still, I fully expected to rank this lower, um, because it's been a while, but, uh, no, I ranked it a 100 out of 100 still. So I think it's absolutely perfect and I love it so, so much. It's like I said, it's one of the best the MCU has to offer. So, um, eat chalk if you disagree. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Bye-bye.